Today's show, the football season is heating up and starting to get interesting as teams position themselves for a postseason run. And what better way to talk about football than with a guy who actually played in the NFL? Our good friend Rocky Cleaver will join us today to talk about what's going on in the NFL and uh, Thanksgiving. And in our Did You Hear About segment, the Mets season might be over, but 36,000 people packed City Field for a different sporting event. A man that claims to have won over $2 million in the, for, on the Kansas City Royals did it again on a UFC fight. And over 600 bobbleheads show up at the doorstep of an apartment building in San Diego. The best hour of sports week is coming up on Glory Days right now. Eatradio.com. Everybody. Today is Saturday, November 21st, 2015, and you are watching The Glory Day Show with Bruce and Disco. My name is Paul Descafani. This is my good friend, Bruce Ola. Kyle Melnick and Eric McAuliffe are behind the glass, and you are joining us on the In Radio TV Network, where we broadcast live from Studio C in the great state of New York. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing all right. I, I brought protection with me. <laughs> you did? And what do you need protection from well, or you, for? You just never know, do you? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I found this. Where's thing. Sammy Stone? Where is Sammy Stone? <laughs> How He's not you? around here, man. <laughs> no, Sammy Stone's not here today. He saw the gun and he ran. <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah. Well, you know, these things kind of happen. They, uh, you know, you never know what's happened. The world has seemed to have completely lost their mind. Yeah. And, you know, we make fun of uh, Kyle and Eric behind the booth sometimes, and we just don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Maybe we should be wearing bulletproof vests instead of, <laughs> instead of carrying guns. I bulletproof don't know. vests don't protect your head. <laughs> well, that's true, too. <laughs> that's true, too. So, what's going on? Well, not much. I mean, you know, I, I had to travel this week, and, um, you know, I traveled a few weeks ago, and getting in and out of the airport was very easy. And mm -hmm. this past Monday was not the same thing. I guess with the situation that happened in France last week, you know, uh, security was tight at the airport. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that. So uh, you had to, uh, you heard your flight got canceled, and you Yeah, drove? and I drove, I had to drive home Thursday night from Erie, Pennsylvania. 500 miles, you know? So it's like the Indy 500, I guess, is what it what was. What did you, you listen know? to? Did you have something in your car? You know, it's interesting. To? You, you know, usually I bring my iPad, uh, my iPod with me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the cars now, they either have the auxiliary jack or even the USB. Right. And unfortunately, I forgot to bring it. So I was restricted to listening to the radio. And, um, you know, when you're traveling that far, you're in and out of different, you know, uh, coverage, co coverage ranges and things like that. But I was surprised at how many... Christian radio stations there are in the middle of Pennsylvania. Ooh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And did they inspire I don't care you? if it rains or freezes as long as I got my plastic Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're listening to Christian rock stations? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that was the only thing that was coming in, man, you know. <laughs> wow, that's a long drive. It is. Too long. Too long. You know, we, uh, over here, the weather was just terrible that night. That yeah, I didn't, hit, I didn't hit weather, uh, pretty bad weather, until I hit Jersey. It was raining then, and it was raining most of the, other, the rest of the way. Actually, when I, got, when I finally got to the LIE, um, out of the corner of my eye, I see like the guy that's on my in left kind of slowing down and doing a little you know, maneuvering. And I look up, and I see there's a car that was maybe about a quarter of a mile in front of us that had, uh, I guess, hydroplane and was blocking two lanes. So I went up getting around to the left, but there were cars behind me that, I don't know, hopefully they didn't hit them, but uh, there, was a, there was a traffic jam after that at like 1 o'clock in the morning. So you didn't do the Good Samaritan thing and pull over and help? 
Uh, there were enough people back there, I felt uh, I needed to get home. <laughs> you just zipped right through. I did. I did. I, I'll confess. Sorry it's, about it's that. It's the benevolent Mr. D. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, in in the uh, in the world of sports, yeah, um, it was kind of a slow week for us here in the New York area. But I noticed the Knicks are winning. Yeah, that's and a I surprise. I saw something strange in the paper. They said that um, the Daily News was soliciting nicknames for uh, was it Christoph Porzingis? Yeah. How do you solicit nicknames? Isn't a nickname something that just kind of... Yeah, you, you figure it would just be bestowed upon you, you know? Right. You yeah. know, but uh, so I don't know... Uh, uh, so what's he going by, KP or something, I think? I, yeah, I think that's what he likes. Yeah. K, K, KPZ or something, or KP... Well, they, I, th I think his nickname last year was Zinger, but he didn't like that, I think, is what I read, you know? So, uh, uh, so and I believe that Phil Jackson gave him this nickname of... K, is it KP? KP. Yeah. You know, we don't talk about... We don't play the high school at all. Show. Uh, we, we ignore college football sometimes. Yes. Uh, Except when we time. get Bill Chandler on the phone with us. <coughs> and Bill Chandler loves his college football. He does. But we do like the NFL here on the Yeah. Uh, and we also like the NHL. You know? Love the and, NHL. And uh, I got a couple interesting things this week. So uh, we wanted to talk about the um, uh, Travis uh, Harmonic. Yeah, Travis Hamonic. Hamonic. Uh, I always called them Harmonic. I yeah, know. I guess the the story broke. I guess the beginning before the season started, he approached uh, Garth Snow, the GM of the Islanders, telling him he, for personal reasons, I think related to his family, he was looking to get traded. And he wanted to, see, I guess, be closer to his family. We don't even he. I don't think anybody knows what his family situation is exactly, no, he other than the fact exactly. that he just wants to be closer yeah. to home. Do you know where his family is? Uh, I think in the Winnipeg area is what they say. Okay. You know, so. Uh, he, he was talking to, uh, to Garth Snow about it beginning of the season. I guess Garth is trying to trade him. And then, unfortunately, he winds up being news, you know. So now that it's news and all the NFL, uh, NHL owners know that the Islanders are trying to trade Travis Hamannick, do you think his value is going to go up or down? Well, you know what? Everybody's going to try and job him. For exactly him. right. Exactly right. So Goss Snow is in not in a good spot now with this whole situation, I don't think. You know, and, and it makes the, and again, you know, I know he, I think he came out to say this because once people started hearing that he wanted to be traded, he wanted to make sure everyone knew it. He wanted to set the record straight that it wasn't the Islanders, you know, they're a top class organization, there wasn't any friction in, you know, with his teammates or anything like that. Right. Uh, there were two other interesting NHL things that came up this week that I wanted to talk to you about. Number one was that the NHL and the Players Association got together and decided on two things okay. this week. Number one, they decided that next year, mm -hmm. every team is going to have a bye week. A bye a week? Uh, they a bye have a week. full seven days off. Okay, so... No games. So they would probably, usually they play every other day, so I guess they would, they right, would be sometimes three games they, play, they wouldn't and play. And there are, there are points during the season where you may play just one game in seven or eight days uh, or something like that, but the next year that the Players Association decided that uh, they were going to do that. But the other thing is that they've decided that this year the All-Star game is I going saw to three be on completely three. I saw, changed. I saw right. that. I saw that. Uh, they've scrapped the traditional All-Star game, and they're going to play three 20-minute games in a three-on-three -three format. What they're going to do is they're going to break up, they're going to take the four divisions, mm -hmm. the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Metropolitan, and what's the other one, the, uh, the Central, and they are going to create four All-Star teams from those divisions. Every team is going to have six forwards, three defensemen, and two goalies. The Pacific and the Central are going to play a 20-minute game. Okay. And they're going to play 10 minutes, and then they're going to switch sides. And I assume they'll probably switch goalies, too. Uh, three on three. And then they're going to uh, the, I mean, the Metropolitan and the Atlantic are going to play a 20-minute game. And the two teams that win will play a 20-minute game. Okay. The winning team gets a million dollars. Gets a million dollars? A million dollars for the winning team. Okay. okay. Um, and that's, you said it was six forwards, three defensemen, two goals, so 11. Right. So, you, it's so it's about $100,000 a piece, yeah. I guess. Okay. So uh, it works out pretty good for the players if they win. 
Okay. Um, uh, the special assistant to the executive director of the National Hockey League Players Association, Matthew Schneider. Remember Matthew Schneider, the player? Yeah. I think he was on the Devils, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Uh, he says, we sat down and we said that we don't seem to be getting the bang for our buck at the All-Star game. You know, last year there was 29 goals in the All-Star game. And that was the game that was in Columbus, right? Yeah, I think the and Columbus, you know what? Uh, that game was virtually unwatchable. Yeah. You know? Um, uh, everyone was in agreement that we needed to do something and unique. And it should be a great weekend for hockey. So that's, uh, they decided to do it. It's just going to be one year. They're going to just try it. Remember, do you remember? I still think that the best format for the NHL for the All Star Games is the old format, which is the Stanley Cup champions against playing the All Star Game against the rest of the league. And I think it should be in the, obviously, to be in the arena of whoever the Stanley Cup. I said, I think that would make for a really good All Star Game. You know? Where's the game this year, do you know? Uh, this year's game, I know where it is. It is in Nashville. Nashville, okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, had, they tried that uh, fantasy draft thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and that was pretty good, but yeah. you know what happened? The players said they didn't like it after a while. You know what? They were all sitting around and they were all getting lubed up. And they <laughs> yeah, they were, were. I remember they were getting really drunk James, while yeah. they were getting picked, but they said the, the last like four or five players that got picked. They, they really didn't like being picked up. Well, last. I mean, you know. Somebody's got to be picked up. That's last. right. Exactly right. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about real fast is, you know, last week we talked about, uh, we had Mike Ferrara on, and we were talking about FanDuel. Right. And the fact that, Draft well, Kings, you know, right. uh, fantasy, fantasy sports, I guess, in general. Right. Whether and it's that, gambling uh, Eric or Schneiderman, a uh, Eric game of the, skill. Uh, right. The Attorney General in New York said that they, they, they wanted to cease operations in New York. Well, you know what? They went to court this week. And the judge said, it's gambling. You need to cease and desist immediately. I still saw commercials last night watching the Islander well, game. Right, but, but if you, apparently if you have a New York address, yeah. you can't, uh, they're gonna, they're not, you're not allowed to use the okay. site anymore. Well, I mean, I, I, I guess, you know, television broadcasts, I mean, in this area, I mean, you're hitting Connecticut, you're hitting Jersey, and I guess if it's not illegal there, I guess, uh, right. I guess they can still advertise. So, yeah. guess what? Uh, somebody's going to sue somebody about something, because that's the way, that's the society we live in. We are a litigious society. We are. Give me back my money. Okay. All right. This guy, and his name, is uh, Yelinda Gutman. Gutman. Okay. He's from Brooklyn. He's a fantasy player. Okay. And he's been playing fantasy, uh, FanDuel and DraftKings for six years. And he's lost... Between five and ten thousand dollars. That, that's a pretty wide gap. I mean, you know, I know. five if, and ten is like if I lost you nine lost, or ten. If you lost, you know exactly how exactly much. Exactly right. Money you I would lost. say it's between five and ten. Well, guess what he's doing? He's suing yeah. DraftKings. He's suing DraftKings. Why? Because he lost. Because he lost money, and he says, okay, that since the court may eventually rule that they're not legal, all the money he lost has to come back to him. What, is he out of his mind? I think he is. He says but, he, but he also found an attorney to take his case. His lawyer, yeah. Hunter... S. Thompson. Hunter, <laughs> R.I.P. Hunter okay. Schlotnick. Schlo, okay. S-H-K-O-L-N-I-K. Okay, said that my client was like many other people who sign on to DraftKings and FanFool. They think they're just playing sports games. But it turns out that it's a gambling situation. They lose a lot of money. If that Come isn't on. the most ridiculous thing Come I've ever on. heard. Yep. How could you, you know what? That's like the people who sue uh, Marlboro because they got lung cancer yeah, right. from uh, cigarettes and stuff like that. You know what? Take responsibilities for your actions. You know, do you think that uh, Yehunda Gutman would be taking suit against him if he won $235,000? Of course not. Of course not. Of course not. You know what? Please, give us a break here, okay? We're getting sick of these things. These people who are just... Well, I mean, it, it, that's the way our society is, though. You know? You lose, or something bad happens to you, you look for somebody to blame, and who can I sue? And we have enough lawyers in this country that'll take any case under any merit. It's for any, on any situation. It's just not right. All right. All right. You know what?
We're just getting started here on the Gory Day Show. Right after the break, we'll talk to former Jets tight end Rocky Cleaver about the NFL and some of his Thanksgiving memories. And later on, we'll talk about some stories that you may not have heard about in our Did You Hear About segment. You uh, Stay with us. You're watching the Gory Day Show with Bruce and Disco only on the Radio TV Network. We're coming right back. <laughs> For 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. It's always been important to us to have music a part of our lives, part of our children's lives. At Village Music Shop, Bonnie and Chuck have not only made it possible for our kids to learn and understand and read music and enjoy playing a musical instrument, but they've also made it fun. I really like coming here. I like coming to Village Music because everybody here is nice. And they've inspired some creativity and imagination and taught them discipline, and along the way they've gotten some self-confidence, really been like a part of our family. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Radio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Radio.com. Welcome back to the Gordon Day Show here on the in Radio TV Network. Thanksgiving is usually associated with eating turkey. Yes. Watching the parade and visiting with family. You, you didn't mention the football piece of this thing. Well, we're not there yet. <laughs> Most of us have five memories of wonderful food, unbelievable desserts, drunk uncles, political arguments, and broken furniture. <laughs> but Thanksgiving is also forever linked to football as the tube is filled with games. On our phone is a man who has most likely been or experienced every one of those things that we just mentioned. Please welcome the lovely and talented Rocky Cleaver. Rocky, how are you? I'm doing well, guys. How are you doing? Good. All righty, man. How are you? Before, before we get into the NFL, I have to tell you something. I'm watching okay. TV yesterday, and a commercial comes on for New York State Lotto. Yeah. Right? And there, there's a guy standing in front of his Christmas tree, and the Christmas oh, yeah, tree ornaments are talking to him, yeah. right? It's a Santa Claus, it was a snowman, and the Christmas pickle <laughs> is on the tree <laughs> and is talking to him. Wait a second, you were dreaming. You, you had just done mushrooms. <laughs> 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 well, I'll tell you what, I must have done same mushrooms because I saw that same commercial, man. You know? Yeah, so they have a talking Christmas pickle now. 
Well, How I are to you? Say something organic. I didn't want to say you did LSD. Of course I, not. Of course <laughs> not. Yeah. Yeah. Mushrooms are natural. <laughs> yes. I'm How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, I'm I'm having a great time being a grandfather, so I'm doing good. I know. I see some of the pictures that you posted. Yeah, we got a big smile on your face there. It, it's it's. I would say grandfatherism is looking good on you there, Rocky. Congratulations. <laughs> well, the whole key is, his name's Cam, Cameron. He's always got a smile on his face, so that helps. Oh, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. So, uh, have you been keeping up with the uh, NFL? Uh, yes, and I want to go publicly that if anybody ever hears of me playing fantasy football, to come and kick me in the groin area. <laughs> uh, why would be that? Why would that be? <laughs> it just it changes the way I look at football. Like last week, I like Adrian Peterson, mm -hmm. and I want him to do well, but then I was going against him, so I was wishing him a broken leg. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried any of the, uh, the daily fantasy things that's been in the news, or are you strictly no, a regular no. thing? Yeah, just somebody talked to me, and I wasn't going to do it this year, and they had a guy who dropped out because he's, I don't know, sick or something. So somebody talked me into it again. And, you know, I thought I had a good team, and, you know, Peyton Manning is basically <laughs> as older than me, I think. So he was my quarterback for a little while. And I, I even one week I picked Fitzpatrick thinking, hey, he, he's going to kill Oakland. And he, that was when he sprained his wrist. Or right, in the third play of the game or something, yeah. Yeah, he had like five points. And then, you know, it's like, I, I have some good guys. And Brandon Marshall is killing it, but he drops too many passes for me. Like, he drops touchdowns, but he still does very well, I guess. I don't know. We had a, had a couple of things we wanted to talk to you. Brandon Marshall actually is one of them. But um, oh. Bruce wanted to ask you about the, uh, uh, the what, what's his name, I.K.? Uh, yeah. Well, well, why don't I ask the question? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm yeah. leading you. Okay. I'm leading the witness. Okay, okay. You know, uh, obviously the big, the big deal last week was Rex Ryan returning to Buffalo, and then he made the decision to have I.K. and Kampali as a co-captain. And uh, when I saw that headline, that really bothered me that he did it. And, and then I guess when I read what, that it's tradition for him to do that, it didn't seem to me that, to be that big of a deal. He wasn't really giving the, Mets, the, middle, uh, the Jets the middle finger. But what do you think about that decision for him to make him the uh, co-captain? Did, did that bother you at all as being a, a former Jet? Or you just well, rolled with it? I mean, it didn't bother me. But my, I went to that game. My son and I went to that game. It's getting close to its 30th birthday. And... So uh, he's my, my son Jake pointed it out to me. And, you know, when you really think about that whole deal, like nothing happened to that guy. Yeah. I mean, it, he broke someone's jaw in a locker room. Now, if he would have broke a woman's jaw at home, oh, my goodness, he'd be, you know, banned from the league and ostracized, right? True. Now, I'm not saying that doing that to... But aren't we at the point where you, if you do that to anybody, you should be punished? Exactly. I, don't I agree. I agree. But, I mean, to say nothing happened to him, I mean, the, the Jets fired him, you know, so I wouldn't say nothing happened to him, but he got picked up, I guess, that day by Buffalo. So uh, Okay, so wait. Nothing happened to him. He went with his old coach who made a captain. <laughs> right. The Jets made him captain. I mean, he'd like to see if he made more money in his contract by being picked up by the Bills. Yeah. Well, we talk now, I mean, back in the day, if you got cut, it, it, was, it sucked. You didn't make more money. Now you can get cut and end up making more money because a couple teams may want you and you're right. a true free agent. I mean, he picked him up within hours yeah, yeah. of being yeah. cut. And, and you know, I think yeah. the week before they were playing uh, Miami, and he made uh, Incognito uh, a co-captain that time, too. So, so you, you know, he's you got a history of doing that kind of stuff. That Rex did that on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. He had to. And it might it might be a smart thing to do, but you know he did it on purpose. 
You know, I think, I really thought that uh, just before that happened, I thought that Rex would get a nice ovation when he came back. Uh, because the fans, I, I think the fans appreciated what he did when he was here. And I also feel that during the, uh, the John Idzik days, we, it was obvious that his hands were tied. Yeah. Um, and I thought he would get a nice ovation when he came back, but because of this, uh, he got booed. What was, well, I mean, you were at the stadium. It was hard to tell uh, from, this, uh, from the TV. Uh, what was going on? Was it kind of mixed, or uh, was it more boos than cheers? Well, there was nobody there, really. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> I, I don't recall even a boo or a cheer. I, I mean, there seriously was nobody at the game. My son and I got there a little early, and ate something and then, you know, went to our seats. And it was, it looked like a preseason game. And then it filled out a little bit, but then people left early, too. Yeah, those Thursday because, night games you know, are tough. the Jets were, what, down like 20 to 3? Right. Uh, you know, those Thursday night games are tough as a fan, both to get to and get home from. Now, I went, yeah. on, I went on Sunday, and uh, I went to that Jacksonville game on Sunday, and it's a, you know, we went with a bus, you know, and it's just, I haven't been there in a year and a half. It was the last time I was at a, a, a jet game. But it's an ordeal yeah. sometime to get there. You really have to plan, and it's got to be a whole day if you're a fan. Oh, yeah. You know, it's got to be a whole day to go there. And, and the and thing you gotta is. you got to go early, and then you hate to leave early. Yeah. Right. But that's. The one good thing about the Thursday night game is we got out of the parking lot quick and were headed south and got home fast. Yeah. Lucky you. But I think it's kind of funny that the NFL thought, didn't this last week that they put Thursday night only on NFL Network. Yeah, that's they, they started only doing on the yeah. NFL Network on Thursday. Yeah. Well, they had the so game. Not only were they two crappy teams, but then yeah. they decided to only watch it on the NFL Network. Well, how about that game from London that was only on, uh, was only streaming live? Yeah, I can't believe oh, that the NFL would it. do that. Yeah, that was a few weeks ago. I'm trying to. I, the the only it was broadcast live, I think, in in the two uh, two towns that had the uh, teams, but everything else was just streaming on the internet. We were, well, that uh, might have been Jack. Didn't Jacksonville play there too? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you about uh, a, a couple of things. I had. Uh, um, I, I was watching. Uh, what is that show? Uh, the the HBO Sports. Or, Inside the NFL. Inside the NFL. I guess it's on Showtime now. And Brandon Marshall was is one of the guys on it, and they were talking about um, media access. Um, and how the players treat the media, but more importantly, how media treats the players. What was it like when, when you were there? Did you get along with the media? And I know, uh, you know, obviously you knew some of the, uh, you know, some of the more iconic Jets. How did they deal with the media? And did the media, you know, kind of, I mean, no matter what you do now, the media exploits on you, and it makes the players a little uh, gun-shy when they're talking to the media. Yeah, I mean, I got along well with the media. Obviously, I wasn't a star. Klecko, I mean, the media was different back then. We knew, you know, it was like <clears throat> Steve Servi, Paul Nidell, who passed away this past year. But, um, I mean, it was guys that we kind of, Craig Logan, guys that we kind of got to know. So they wouldn't, you know, try to get the scoop on you and be the one to print something that maybe you know, made the guy look bad. And um, guys after games would either, some of the guys like that were, I mean, Mickey Shuler would never undress in front of the media. Me, I didn't care because it's like, <laughs> obviously no big deal. But, you know, pardon the pun there. But, um, <laughs> you know, some guys were shyer or more religious or whatever. And, and, you, you know, when you come in out of a game and you undress and go take a shower and walk out with a towel, you know, some guys care, some guys don't. Some media care, some media don't. But um, now I think it's who's going to get the first scoop, you know, especially with cell phones, who might video somebody or right. who might Instagram, twit, Twitter, whatever they do. So it's definitely a lot under a microscope now. You know, and it's a lot more, uh, it's a little more intrusive, so to speak, because they, and now it's not like it used to be. I mean, other than the TV guys uh, who would try and do something because they need to get it on the air by 11 o'clock that day, when it was just a newspaper, you had your whole evening 
to write your story and it wouldn't be out till the next day. Now, like you're saying, you know, people have blogs and people have, and it's more instant, it's instantaneous. And um, they, they hound these players today. And uh, you know, I, I always wanted to be that guy. I always wanted to be that journalist guy. The headline the hustler, huh? <laughs> no, 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 I didn't want to be that guy. Okay. But I Good. wanted to be the guy that would develop a relationship with the player you know, with some of the players and, you know, tell their story the way it should be told, not just what I think it should be, you know. And, um, uh, you know, Brandon Marshall was talking about it, and one of the, uh, one of the media people that were on, was on the panel said that, you know, they don't have that much access to the players. They only have 45 minutes a day, they were saying, and um, she was saying that the players should try to develop a relationship with the writers. I don't see how you guys could do that sometimes. You got 60 guys in a locker room. Yeah. Well, back then, people did. And I think back then, you know, if you told somebody it was off the record, then it was really off the record, you know. Um, but you know what I'd ask Brandon Marshall is how many Twitter followers does he have? And, and you know, when someone puts something nice about him on Twitter and everybody thinks he's a great guy, then I'm sure... He's happy with it, but if somebody puts something on there about him being nasty, then I'm sure he's upset. If he, you know, you can't have it both ways. You can't right. be a media celebrity and then be a crybaby, too. I don't know what he said, but a lot of guys nowadays, I think, they love the adoration, but then they, they can't stand their too thin-skinned yeah. when anybody, you know, gives them any negative Right. It, it kind of like dropping too many balls. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, you, know, that, you, yeah. you, you catch the game-winning touchdown, everybody wants to talk to you. You know, you drop the game-winning touchdown, everybody still wants to talk to you, but you don't want to talk about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I hate to say this, but, and it might just be my bad memory, I mean, Al Toon, I don't know if he ever dropped the ball. I'm sure he did. But Wesley Walker didn't have as good a hand, but he caught most things that hit him in the hand. I mean, I, I, touchdowns especially, it seems like if you're ever going to concentrate more, it's when you actually know you're in the end zone and the ball's coming to you, and you're like, oh, my God, I have a chance to catch this. And Wait. the gloves nowadays, I don't know how they drop anything with those gloves, <laughs> but that's, you know, when, uh, he obviously is a great receiver. You know, the, the, there was a little controversy in the Giant game with uh, Odell Beckham Jr. catching that ball in the end zone and not making what they called a football move. <laughs> right, um, the ball got slapped out of his hands, and uh, they called it, ruled it originally a touchdown, and then upon replay they, uh, they said it was incomplete yeah. pass. Yeah. You, you obviously were a former uh, receiver, and you caught the ball. Do you understand yeah. the rule? I, I can kind of understand it. It doesn't make sense, though. Like... Uh, you know, it used to be kind of if you got two feet down, you know, one, two. Right. That was a football move. I mean, maybe they should change it to you have to make a ballet move or something. <laughs> that, that people could actually say, hey, that was a ballet move. You like know, a pirouette or something there? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a football move, you get tackled if you hang on to the ball. I mean, it should be, that should be part of the football move, right? See, I, 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 always I, don't get thought, I always thought that the end zone was a special place that, uh, you know, it is for a running back. If a, run, all, a running back doesn't even have to get into the end zone. And a you receiver break the also, plane. That's all you, you just do. have to break the plane. So why is it that when you catch the ball and you, your two feet hit the ground, that's not enough? To me, that, I'm sorry, that's possession. You know what I mean? You have you possess the ball in the end zone, and then you have to make a football move. Yeah. You've taken everything that's on the edges out of the game. Well, you know, right. even when we were watching the game, they were saying that you know they have to they're gonna have to rewrite this rule again because it's got too much interpretation. You know, and uh, I don't think anybody really knows what uh, what a football move is these days. Right. They definitely do have to do something. And you're right. I mean, I I never thought of it before this. I don't like that you can just stick the ball across and then fumble it, because then there's no football move after that. You fumbled it. Right. Uh, you know when, I, they, I, when they wave the ball and they, they say it's a touchdown because that ball broke the plane? Right. But then they'll wave it, and it'll go across the plane, but then it gets fumbled, and the other, somebody else picks it up, and the guy's celebrating that he fumbled the ball but <laughs> was lucky enough to break the plane. You know, yeah. I, it's... 
It's a, yeah. It's just something that I think it's kind of like what baseball did last year or two years ago with the the sliding rule at home plate. I I don't think it's defined enough that you know. Uh, that, that, and it's causing more controversy than it's saving. Although when they asked Joe Torre about it this year, they were talking about that um, uh, the play that happened with uh, Tejada yeah. in the uh, in the NLDS, and they said that next year they're going to put in some sort of a rule to try and protect the shortstops and second basemen. But they don't know what and they don't know how. Yeah, it sounds like it's really right. not going to work out. Right. So they asked him about. Uh, the thing with uh, the catchers and how it's confusing. He says, well, no catchers have broken their legs since we put the rule in play. <laughs> I think that's the wrong rule. Yeah. That's the wrong right. reason well, to do something. Chase Utley should have been ejected, and there should have no, no runner can advance when you slide like that because he didn't slide. He didn't even go at the bag. He, no, he killed jumped. the guy. And he then was in the was air when he hit him. Yeah. I mean, it was a great takeout, that's for sure. Yeah. It was a football move. That, that was, that was a yeah. football move. <laughs> that would have been a penalty in football, though. That's what we were talking about. We said that guy not only would have, uh, would have gotten a penalty, but after they reviewed it after the game, they would have suspended him because, uh, you know, they have that play against a defenseless receiver. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, how more defenseless is anybody than a shortstop trying to turn a double play? Right, with his back to the uh, runner, too. Oh boy! Yeah. All right, we and are. Uh, you should start your slide before the base. And he didn't. He was I mean, that, in the that, air when he hit him. In the air when he hit him. I don't know. Hey, Rocky! Quickly, uh, what's what do you is your biggest surprise on the NFL season this year? It's obviously not the uh, the the Patriots running the table here at nine and zero. But uh, what what's your biggest surprise so far? Uh, well, Tampa Bay surprised me. The you know Jameis Winston. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think you know. I'm, I still don't know if he's going to do great in the future, but that surprised me. Um, New England did kind of surprise me though, because other than Brady seems to just do well with whoever you throw out there. Are they going to um, win the whole thing? You know, they win in the whole thing, the Patriots. I think they'll. Okay, this is what I said a while ago too. I think they'll win the whole thing if they have one loss going into the playoffs. I, I think see. if they go in it undefeated, it, I, I think it's going to be tough to just keep going undefeated. Yeah, I, uh, I, really I, don't, I don't see how you do that. I think there's so much pressure with that undefeated thing hanging over your head. Yeah. Yep. Carolina being like undefeated, I think, is was smart. I don't know if he could intentionally lose a game, but if Belichick was smart, he would somehow sit somebody or do something or say Brady's got a hernia just for a little, little while and then yeah hey do you think uh, you know we, we were talking uh about the nfc and the three top teams uh carolina uh uh minnesota and arizona uh any one of those teams going to win a super bowl i hope arizona um kenny o'brien coached carson palmer okay. at usc and then he, when Carson, whatever he was going to, what he'd say, he's either going to retire when he quit Cincinnati, kind of. Yeah. I think Kenny worked him out, and, you know, during whenever he was his little hiatus before he got on Arizona. So I kind of like that combination, and I like Carson Palmer. And, you know, I like Arizona. So I, I hope Arizona. Yeah, and Fitzgerald that. seems like a great guy, you know. The three things that those teams, the, the one thing I mean that those three teams have in common is they're three of the biggest teams in yeah. the league, uh, overall size and, and weight. Uh, and they're really the three biggest surprises. I mean, out of the, uh, you know, who would have thought Carolina would be undefeated? I know, I know I didn't. You know, we, talked about, the, we talked about the Colts. The Colts were going to be this juggernaut of a team, and they're, they're four and five. I mean, they're sitting in first place. They're tied with Houston, but... I don't think we expected to see them four and five. Hey, listen, I picked. I believe I picked the Colts to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> so I'm in deep trouble. I might no, I well thought they were going to be good too. I think uh, what's his face? I, I always want to say Oliver Luck, but that's his dad. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's Andrew. Andrew Luck. Luck. Right? Andrew Luck. I, you know, I think he's the prime example. He seems like a really nice guy, good kid. Good. I think he just put too much pressure on himself, or 
didn't quite have enough around him, and then he tried to do too much, and and somehow he settled down a little bit, I think. It looks like he settled down, and he should, probably should have a good rest of the year. All righty, man, we're running out of time here. Um, thanks for... And Peyton Manning, Peyton Ooh. Manning should definitely retire. You know what? <laughs> I am in the same boat you are, by the way, with my fantasy team. I have Peyton Manning. I've stayed, I've stayed with him way too long. Uh, unfortunately, I was watching the Mets during the entire month of October, and when the World Series was over, I was one in seven. <laughs> <laughs> so the way it goes. Well, I think, go. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I've got four wins, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the same place you are. All righty, man. At least we're ahead of Disco. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, enjoy your, uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving. And I want to see, you know what picture I want to see, right? Every grandchild uh, for Thanksgiving? Uh, it, I don't know, does it have something to do with a pickle? <laughs> no, 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 no pickles involved. Here. We need the picture uh, of the tiny baby holding the gigantic turkey leg. That's a Thanksgiving oh, okay. tradition. <laughs> well, first of all, this baby is the farthest thing from tiny. This baby's <laughs> like 30 pounds. Seriously. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Already 30 pounds. Wow. <laughs> all righty, man. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy your holiday. Happy Thanksgiving there, Rocky. Thanks for, right, thanks guys, for calling in. All right. Thanks. All That's right. our good pal, uh, Rocky Cleaver. So let's take another break here on Glory Days. When we get back, we'll catch you up on some stories you may not have heard about yet. Stay with us. You're watching the Glory Days show with Bruce and Disco, only on the Nerevia TV network. Coming right back. For 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. It's always been important to us to have music a part of our lives, part of our children's lives. At Village Music Shop, Bonnie and Chuck have not only made it possible for our kids to learn and understand and read music and enjoy playing a musical instrument, but they've also made it fun. I really like coming here. I like coming to Village Music because everybody here is nice. And they've inspired some creativity and imagination and taught them discipline and along the way they've gotten some self-confidence, really been like a part of our family. The world of advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, Inravio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is Inravio.com. Welcome back to the Glory Day Show with Bruce Disco here on the Enravio TV Network. 
Uh, if you're a sports fan, and why would you be watching this program if you weren't, you know that you can get all the scores and highlights instantly from other sources on the internet like ESPN. But here on The Glory Day Show, we pride ourselves on trying to find the types, types of stories that would interest you, our twisted yet sophisticated audience. The bizarre, the maudlin, the humorous, and of course, the completely ridiculous. We call this segment, Did You Hear About? Story number one brings us to Southern California. Have you ever heard of an outfielder called Chris D'Onofria? I have. Did you really? Yeah. All righty. I have a bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll really be interested in this story. Okay. The reserve outfielder is currently a member of the Chicago Cubs and on a team full of young rising stars. He's not exactly a household name outside of, well, the D'Onofria family. And if you know of Chris D'Onofria, you might know that he started out his career with the San Diego Padres in 2010. And he played four years in sunny Southern California before moving to the Windy City last season. Did you hear about these roommates in San Diego? They found a pile of 600 unopened Chris D'Onofria bobbleheads on their doorstep. 600. What they were doing there, or how they got there, is still the great unknown. Uh, but it is still unclear if they were extras from a very unsuccessful bobblehead giveaway or if the game might have been canceled before the event ever, ever happened. Anyway, D'Onofrio was traded to the Seattle Mariners during the 2014 season. Uh, the roommate said that last week, during the middle of the night, they heard a crash and saw a white van speeding away from what turned out to be piles of boxed-up bobbleheads. Fearing that the bobblehead might be used as mules for contraband, they immediately notified the police, who confirmed that the plastic uh, toys were, in fact, just that, Chris D'Onofrio bobblehead dolls. Since that night, the roommates have been trying to distribute them to friends and family, co-workers and neighbors, but the colony of D'Onofrio's is still taking up a space in their front hall. Look at all those bobbleheads. Jeez. <laughs> D'Onofrio's an unrestricted free agent this year and could sign with any team. I wonder if these guys could kind of like maybe get a hold of him and see if he wants these dolls back. 600 of them, man. I you know what? Know. You can't give them away, I guess. I, I love bobblehead dolls. I wanted to see if I can get in touch with those guys. I'll take one. We, they, I think they want you to take more than one, man. I think they want you to take a bunch. You know, Christmas is coming. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So our uh, second story yeah, keeps us out west. Have you ever heard of Vegas Dave? No. All right, well, during the first week of the 2015 baseball season, Dave Oanka, Oanka placed a bet on the Kansas City Royals, then 30 to 1 odds to win the World Series, to win it all. During the course of the season, he placed numerous bets in 10 different casinos on different diminishing odds from his original 31, 30 to 1 back to 5 to 1. In all, he placed over $100,000 in bets and claims to have won over $2.5 million on those bets. He posted pictures of his, on his Facebook page of his winning tickets and himself enjoying his winnings. He looks like he's enjoying himself there. <laughs> he sure does. <laughs> Oenka claims he could not find anyone to take a single $100,000 bet, so he needed to find multiple books to take all his bets. But that is not the story here. What is the story? Did you hear about how Vegas Dave did it again? No, but I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> last, last week, week <laughs> that's me. Last week, he placed a $20,000 bet on UFC fighter Holly Holm, who was 11 1 underdog to the undefeated women's champion Ronda Rousey. Rousey had never lost a fight, but that wasn't going to stop Vegas Dave. He told MMAJunkie.com that he was going to bet $10,000 against Rousey for every fight she ever had until she lost but he didn't have to waste a lot of money or a lot of time. It took exactly one minute into the second round for Holm to place a vicious kick into Rousey's head, sending her to the canvas. And just like that, Vegas Dave was holding a $220,000 winning ticket just two weeks after he cashed in his $2.5 million for the Royals. Although the sports book in Vegas claimed that his total winnings is completely fabricated, Dave, Vegas Dave could care less what they say. He has his own business, giving advice to what he claims is over 2,500 sports betting clients. This guy has his own business. People call him to get, uh, to get betting advice. On fantasy football? On everything. Anything, huh? 
He even posted Instagram photos of his winning ticket to prove he had made the bets. And he confirmed that he indeed, and, and the sports betting poll did confirm he did win 20,000, he had a $20,000 winning ticket. But they also said he's a little bit of a nut. No kidding. They described the 38 Oanaka as a maniac who often makes a bevy of exorbitant bets. And other sportsbook industry sources say that he has suffered huge losses in the past. He also makes outrageous claims on his website, boasting a 125-3 and record in his Major League Baseball system. And he says he's so far 15-0 and on NFL and college football. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think he's full of it, though. And uh, just so we could leave you with a smile on your face, here is a picture of the former champion, Ronda Rousey, before her, space, her face exploded in Las Vegas. Where's that picture? Oh, that is a nice picture. Hello. <laughs> now, why would you want to punch that face? Why would you want to bet against that face? <laughs> you know? I don't know, but I certainly have a right, uh, smile right. on our face. You know what? We're going to do the last story? No. Nah. Okay. We'll We're save that for, uh, for the two-minute warning. We're going to go right to the break. How okay. about that? Sounds good. All right. Um, we're going to take just one more break. Oh, one more just break. one more. Okay, a That's quick it. one. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we get back, we'll uh, wrap up for the wrap week. Wrap up for the weekend. You're watching the Glory Day Show with Disco here on the Radio TV Network. Coming right back. For over 60 years, Hanson Carpet has put the customer first, providing only the finest quality products and service. And Hanson Carpet is so much more than just carpet. We also carry a wide selection of window blinds and shades, and our licensed and insured technicians can service any of your flooring or window covering needs. Browse our huge selection of laminate, carpet, linoleum, vinyl, and tile. Stop by our showroom today or visit HansonCarpet.com. No matter what your project, Hanson Carpet has got you covered. advertising has changed. Radio, TV, and newspaper revenues have declined drastically. Why? Because businesses have realized that advertising return on investment isn't what it used to be. So what can we do about it? Well, that's easy. Advertise online. Own a local restaurant, real estate agency, or even a national retail chain? Whatever your business, in Ravio can get your message out there. And we can do it at a fraction of the cost. Call today and see the difference for yourself. This isn't TV. This isn't radio. This is in Ravio.com. Hey, this is Chris Lunch Jake, and if inravio.com spots you at an event wearing this bracelet, they will give you $100. Welcome back to the Glory Day Show with Bruce Disco here on the Inravio TV Network. So what did we learn today? Well, that uh, now that the cat is out of the bag about uh, Travis Hamannick uh, requesting to be traded, that I think the Islanders are going to have a problem getting full market value for uh, that asset in their, Listen, you know, we, uh, in we, their portfolio. I believe we, we found out how much we missed that guy in the playoffs last year. Yeah. You know, um, you just don't, you know, the, the problem is, uh, like you said, once that cat got out of the bag, how did that freeze ever get started? Cat out of the bag. I don't know. I don't, 
Must have been a cat lover, I guess. I don't I mean, know. You just got to imagine a bag full of cats. Yeah, I don't right? want to think about that. And you've got a bag full of cats. They're all trying to get out. Once one gets out, they're all out. That cat's going to be kind of like the genie in the bottle, I guess. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, I learned that uh, why not uh, call Vegas Dave if you're going to bet on FanDuel? What have you got to lose? That's true. That's true. You know, and speaking about just betting in general, that, you know, in, in our country and, and in today's, uh, you know, times, you can, you can sue anybody about anything if something bad happens to you. Yeah. Just one more example of that with this guy that lost between five and $10,000 in betting, and now he's suing everybody he can. And it's just, uh, you know, it's like uh, Kramer suing for the hot coffee. That's right. That's right. Who told you to put the bomb on? <laughs> I didn't tell you to put the bomb on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also think that um, don't leave props on the table for us <laughs> because we will find a way to use them. Don't shoot. Please don't shoot. Don't and I tell you, I, you know, like talking to Rocky, his, his biggest surprise, which I thought was a good one, was uh, how well Tampa Bay is playing and that Jemias Wilson looks like Winston might be, uh, might the, be real the real deal. deal. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I really didn't think he would do well. Not that I didn't think he would do well. I, I really thought Mariota would make more of the, uh, of, uh, the splash, splash so to speak, uh, and he hasn't. But, I, but you know what? What we did talk about in the beginning of the year about Tampa Bay was that we felt Tampa Bay was a better team than Tennessee That's was. right. They had better and, uh, core players around them. Yeah. Right. Uh, and I really, really, uh, I really want a Chris D'Onofrio bobblehead. <laughs> you do, I huh? really do. I, and I'm going to do whatever I can to bring a Chris D'Onofrio uh, bobblehead doll. He, right right here. to here to this right program. Here. I'm going to bring it to this program. You know, I, I'm wondering, I'm, I'm surprised that they, they wouldn't have them on eBay or something. You would think so. Right? I mean, you got 600 of them. I'll pay for the shipping. How much could it cost? Only weighs like six ounces. Yeah. And, you know, so you don't pay for, I don't think it needs to be a priority disco. I don't think you really need to have that bobblehead tomorrow, man, you know. You know and I think that uh, if you drink enough eggnog, the Christmas pickle will talk back. <laughs> Crazy stuff, man. Crazy. It was really kind of a down week in sports, though. It really wasn't yeah, all that much going on. You know what? We, I think we're coming down from our baseball high now. Yeah. You know? And I guess the, uh, I, they, there's some baseball stuff going on. The Mets didn't make any deals. I think the Yankees made a couple and things like that. And no, uh, I guess the winter meetings are the next uh, big thing, right? The winter meetings will be the next big thing. But right now, we've got Thanksgiving to look forward to, right? We've got football to look we, forward to. Drunk, drunk uncles? Drunk uncles. We need... Uh, are you an uncle to anybody? I am, of course. So uh, am I. So I'm going to be a drunk uncle. Have you ever been be. drunk uncle at the... Uh, of course. <laughs> I was drunk uncle. I once. was a drunk uncle at my at my birthday party a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to our producers, Kyle Melnick and Eric Mikhaila, for all their hard work and making us look good out there. And thanks to our guest, Rocky Cleaver, for taking the time out of his day and his grandchild to join us today. It's always good to talk to Rocky. Thanks again, Chuck and Body, putting up with this nonsense week after week. Hope you feel better. I understand you guys are under the weather today. And of course, thanks to you, our loyal viewers. Don't forget, you can check out the Glory Days On Demand page on www.inradio.com, and you can watch any of our past shows or any of the other great shows on the inradio.com TV network. No show next Saturday. We're taking the week off. Yeah. We're going to be drunk. <laughs> uh, we'll be enjoying uh, Thanksgiving next weekend, so uh, enjoy your holiday, and we hope you can celebrate it with your family. Uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. We will see you next time.